Hey guys, it's Kaylee. I am back with another thrift haul. We just went thrifting um, yesterday and we brought back a small little thrift haul. It's not too small, but it's not too big, um, but with a big focus on increasing average sale price, saying no to some of the lower sale brands unless they have a very, very high average sale price and trying to increase that average sale price number. Um, we are still trying to stick to the 100% sell-through rate. However, trying to aim for better items and going to more places to pick them up. Um, with the idea in mind, and I've said this a hundred times, but with the idea in mind that if we can increase our average sale price or essentially double it, then we can cut our workload in half. And that is, yeah, that's the initiative right now. So in this batch that we got yesterday, I am going to count up for you how much stuff we actually got. Uh, we got 27 items and my average cost of goods which is slightly skewed because I got one item for quite a bit of money and I'll explain that here in a moment. Um, but my average cost of goods, even including that higher price item was $6.18. And then of those 27 items, I'm just pulling up my sourcing spreadsheet here. Um, our average sale price was $41.63. So fantastic average sale price and really happy with that and again it's going to take way less uh, work to get all of this listed for the same amount of gross profit that it would have taken um, for double the amount of items so super happy with that i'm going to keep my sourcing spreadsheet pulled up here that way if i forget a comp i can share that with you guys uh, but yeah, we're gonna dive in. Before we dive into today's video, I wanted to take another moment to thank a company that constantly partners with my videos, and that is Dossier. If you guys are unfamiliar with Dossier, they are an online fragrance company. They take inspiration from luxury perfumes and colognes, and they recreate those scents, but at a much more affordable cost to you. I have tried both the name brand perfume and also the Dossier Inspiration perfume and I can almost never tell the difference. And because it's cheaper, I'm able to treat myself much more often than I would if I were buying the name brand. I love a good deal, so I love sharing brands like this with you guys. Some of you have also tried out some of your new favorite scents and let me know about them, so I've been trying those as well. This month I repurchased Fruity Almond, which is inspired by a very popular luxury scent, Carolina Herrera's Good Girl. This one is a favorite to many and certainly one of my favorites. I also tried a brand new scent to me, which is Citrus Green Apple, which is inspired by Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue, and I loved the scent. This is definitely going to be a new repurchase of mine that I frequently get. It's super lightweight, uh, very fresh smelling, and kind of subtle, which are some of my favorite scents. One thing I love about Dossier is they have a risk-free policy. So if you get something and you don't like it, you can send it back for a full refund. Try it out a couple times, make sure you're not gonna get headaches and make sure it pairs well with your skin. I absolutely love that brand and I purchase it just about every month, either for myself or as a gift. So try it out if you want, the coupon code will be linked down below. And now back into today's thrift haul. All right, so let's dive in. We've got quite a bit of stuff here and a little bit new to my setup as I started putting a table here um, to flat lay everything instead of dumping it into another bin because you guys told me it was like making you cringe. Um, and I kind of agree. I want to flatten them out a little bit to hopefully prevent wrinkles by the time that we get to list it. Uh, so this is definitely a bread and butter item. As I mentioned, most of these are higher ASP items. However, we do have some bread and butter in here. So this is a brand I like to get in plus size tops. It is Ralph Lauren or Lauren Ralph Lauren. This is their jeans line and this is a size 2X which is a fantastic size in this brand. This is just a plaid long sleeve and starting to move into fall. Not quite there yet, but starting to move into fall. Um, I feel like this will be a great item. Plaids do really well during that time and it's long sleeve, so excited about that. Um, we paid $4.99 for it and I will probably list it somewhere between 25 and 30. This is another plus size item that we got. This is Catherine's. Their brand is pretty much exclusively plus size. It's what they're known for. The larger the size, the better. And we definitely tried to factor stack with this one. So this one's a 3X. 
Um, it is a longer length sleeve, definitely has some nice details, more blousey than like a t-shirt. Um, and we will also list that for around 25 to 30. I feel like this is Catherine's too. It is <laughs> a 2X button up shirt, again, longer sleeve. Um, I'm saying all of this about the upcoming season because all of these items, even though we just purchased them, um, let me think about this, we're probably not going to even begin listing these for a couple of weeks because that's how far ahead we are on sourcing. Um, so anything that we get today probably won't even start the listing process until two weeks from now. And then once we do start to list it, those items are getting scheduled ahead of time. And I think we're currently two weeks ahead. Um, so all of these items are not going to be actually set active on eBay and Poshmark until approximately a month from now, um, unless I pull them, which I might do. Um, but we're having to kind of think ahead on sourcing and try to start thinking now, what are people going to be buying a month from now and a month from now will be in August. We'll be starting to move back into the back to school season and then we'll be approaching fall. So I'm trying to keep that in mind as we are sourcing. So if you are somebody like me who schedules like way ahead of time, you've got a sourcing bank or you've got a draft bank, it might be um, a strategy that you want to put a little bit more thought into. Um, next up is another plus size bread and butter. It is Talbot's. Love this brand and plus sizes. This one's a really cool substantial piece, um, mixed prints. It's a long sleeve button top um, and it also has roll tab sleeves. Um, so we will make sure to put that in the listing where this can be rolled up and converted into more of a half sleeve. So um, lots of good factor stacking there. And we'll probably list that one closer to the $30 mark just for all of those factors. All right, next up is another great bread and butter, high self rate, definitely stick to larger sizes. It's Knox Rose. I love larger sizes in this and also their dresses. This is a knee length, very pretty red kind of gauzy dress um, and a size XXL. So that's gonna perform really well. We picked that up for about $4.99, um, actually exactly $4.99. I don't know why I said about. Um, and we're probably gonna list that for 25 to 30. All right, next up is a new brand to me and let me see what we decided to list this for. Okay, so I paid $4.99, we're expecting to list this for 50 and it's kind of like a golf wear polo brand. Um, again, new to me, it's called Malbon. So you guys should definitely look that up. This is a size medium, it's just a plain black and white polo shirt, but it is very high quality feeling. Definitely feels like it could be like a Lululemon polo or something like that. Oh, completely forgot to show you this little patch here. I think this might be their logo. So definitely worth um, looking into and is definitely a newer brand to us. Should I skip around and do some hard goods? I think I will. Uh, just because it looks fun <laughs> so i don't do a, a whole lot of this isn't even technically hard goods but outside of clothing i don't pick up a lot of purses and i don't pick up a lot of shoes um you know i would say maybe once a week do we pick up shoes or purses just relatively speaking compared to the clothing that we're getting we're buying mostly clothing um, so i'm always excited when i find um, a decent pickup so this let me know if you would have bought this okay so i saw this coming out on a new like rolling cart with some shoes and i was like man i don't love picking up michael kors the brand's kind of gone to hill but i know that the backpacks do well and i know that mono monogram which is the all over like logo that's a monogram. I know that that does well. So um, all the initials all over it, the fact that it's like a mini backpack is just really on trend. And I was like, looks like it's in really great condition. So um, as soon as they put it on the hook, I grabbed it and I was very disappointed because I saw all this little flaw right here. Now, I thought initially that this was where the um, leather had rubbed off, but I'm looking at it a little bit further and I think it might actually just be some like crud that needs wiped off. So 
I'm gonna attempt to clean it, um, even if it is just the piping of the leather that's torn. I thought it would still be worth taking a risk on because the style, especially with a monogram, has a 100% sell-through rate. And I saw ones like this going for over $100 pre-owned. Now, obviously those ones were in better condition. So I figured I could probably still get like 65, 75 for this, even with um, this little flaw right here. And otherwise it's in really fantastic condition. Um, so we're gonna get this cleaned up and, and see about it. Um, but I almost left it behind, but I'm thinking I can still make a really great profit on this. So let me know your thoughts on that. Those were kind of, um, those were my decision, decision making thoughts. Um, on whether or not to get the item as I was in the store. Uh, next up is a brand I don't find very often. It is Kipling or Kipling, not sure how to pronounce it. I'm sure someone will tell me. Um, this is a nylon bag. I paid $3.99 for it. And it's like a, um, it's a crossbody, but I almost feel like it could be converted into more of a fanny pack. Um, but these have a really great sell-through rate. Um, I saw ones like this going for about 35 to 40. I'm gonna list mine for 35 just to ensure a quick sale. Um, but I thought that was a really good deal and always excited to find purse brands that sell really quickly. This one I was really excited about. This I paid, um, $8.99 for, which is not a bad deal for this brand. It is a Dooney and Burke. It is an authentic Dooney and Burke. They do make fakes. Um, a lot of people ask me how I know if something is real or fake. To be honest with you, most of the time I don't and I have to do some research. Um, but what I do know about these bags is that they typically have a contrasting inside. Typically, that's not true for all of them. Um, and they should have this Dooney and Burke tag on the inside um, with a little serial number here. Um, so that was a good indicator to me that it was real. It feels very high quality. Plus I was able to Google lens this for the style um, to like triple confirm that this was real. Um, and this was called the Dooney and Burke Lexington Tote. And this is a really, really nice high quality condition bag. So like I said, I paid $8.99. I saw this bag going for um, anywhere from like 50 to, I think I saw one for $75. Um, I took the keywords from that listing um, that sold for that much because I thought it was kind of an outlier and I thought I probably wouldn't be able to get that much. Um, but I wanted to use the keywords that that person used because I think it helped us sell the listing. So the pebbled leather was something that they used. Grain was another keyword that they used. So I'm gonna use those in my listing um, and make sure to include all of that. Uh, but it, uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be a great sale. I think I'm gonna list mine for like 50 to 60 just to ensure a really quick sale, uh, but I was pleasantly surprised to find Dooney and Burke for $8.99. I thought that was a good flip. Definitely not all of their styles have a 100% sell-through rate, but some of them do, and that Lexington tote was definitely one of them. All right, I came across a pair of shoes that are very new to me. This one is a brand that is completely, completely new to me, um, and I think you guys will find it interesting. So they look like barefoot shoes to me, this like very flat kind of thin material. If you guys see any shoes that are like similar to the barefoot shoes, I would say look them up because these brands are really popular right now. Um, this brand is called Astral. And the inside you can tell is kind of like a barefoot. You guys know what I mean when I say like barefoot shoe. I don't know if you do, but for those of you that do. Um, they're almost like the toe shoes, except this one doesn't have the toe thingies, but um, this seemed like a very high quality brand. And this one's in really great condition. I do need to clean the bottoms, but otherwise in really great condition. And let's see here. We picked these up for $5.99. I'm gonna list them for 65. Uh, this particular style was called the Loyak AC Men's Water Hiking Shoe, and it had a um, over 100% sell-through rate, but this brand in general seems pretty good. 
Uh, so I would keep your eye out for it. Um, Cause yeah, I think that's gonna be a really, really quick flip. And this next one is, is a brand that I do know of, but I was not aware that they made shoes like this. This is Nike. And I picked them up because I thought they looked like high quality combat boots, um, which can do really well. Um, they also have a little bit of text right here, which is a good indicator that it might be um, a higher end brand, but it is Nike, which I was really surprised with. Um, and I did a quick Google lens and these were called the Nike SFB eight inch jungle, uh, basically field boots combat boots, tactical boots. Um, but this F SFB line, um, which I think might be like special forces or something like that, if I had to guess, um, does really well. So these are very, not rare, but somewhat rare boot. You're not gonna find a lot of them. And if you see anything Nike that is uh, relatively different, or something you don't normally see, I would definitely look it up because some of those pieces can do well. So um, these are also a really good size. These are a men's size 10 and a half, which is um, pretty good. They are in excellent condition other than there's a couple of marks on the leather. This is the biggest one, um, but with the sell through rate being as high as it was, um, I definitely wanted to get it just because they are more rare and people were paying way up for them. So, that was the item that drove up my um, average cost of goods because I paid $39.99 for them, 40 bucks, which is the most I've paid in a while. I think I paid $50 for like a Lily Pulitzer dress before. Um, this would probably be the second highest that I've spent in a while. Um, but I think I'm gonna list them for $125. I actually saw some of them going for like $150, $175. Um, and I think I'm the only one that might have the size in this colorway. So um, I'm gonna look at that again, but I do believe I'm gonna list that for about 125. So 40 and a 125, and it should be a super quick flip. Um, paying up's always a risk, but I feel pretty confident in the data that I was able to find. All right, moving back on to the clothing. Uh, Nikki found a few really great dresses at this one thrift store. Um, trying to see if I can tell uh, which, which of these dresses are, there it is. This is called the Maria Tiered Maxi Dress. It is a Maeve Anthropology. Any kind of anthropology midi to maxi length dress always performs well for me, especially if it's in a larger size. This is an extra large, so that definitely increased value. It is really pretty. It's got pockets um, and some really nice texture to it. So Nikki did a comp on this specific style and we're gonna list this for $75. We paid $4.99, so super thrilled about that. And we actually got two Maeve dresses. I'm actually going to add orange into the title here um, so that when the girls upload their drafts, they know which one, which Maeve dress they're looking at. So um, here's the other Maeve dress. It's also size XL. And this one's in black. And it looks like we couldn't find the exact style name on this quite yet. Um, but we plan on listing it for around 50. This one is a little bit drapey, definitely maxi length, kind of minimalist neutral. Um, yeah, $4.99 into 50. Really great average sale price on that. Okay, this is another new brand that Nikki found. And let me see here. Uh, we're going to list this for $50. We paid $4.99. It is called Dress Me Linen. And so if you guys see that, I would definitely look into it. I think they custom make dresses. I think Nikki told me most of them have somebody's name on the inside. Um, but this is very like log and looky, oversized, longer length, midi to maxi length, depending on how tall you are, dress. And this thing is really gorgeous. And Anything with a lot of linen, we always look up because those brands usually perform pretty well. Um, but that is definitely a new one to me. I've never heard of that brand before. So excited to find that. 
All right, this is another plus size Catherine's piece. It's a 2X. I won't go into too much detail about it, but leaf print, three quarter sleeve, button up. Uh, we'll list that for about 25. Great bread and butter. This is a brand that typically performs really well for us. It is Title Nine, And you can see the size is a little bit rubbed off, but I believe it's a size six. Um, actually, it might be a 16. I don't know. I'm gonna have to do some measurements. Those look a little bit bigger than a six. So, um, but regardless, they're a pair of very thick, interesting detail hiking pants. And we should be able to sell these for $30 to $35. I'm gonna make a note really quick in here about the size because I am unsure if it is a six or a 16. So I'm gonna put C measurements so that we can check the size chart against what we have measured because um, that could make a difference. But uh, probably 30 to 35 on that. And next up is a Zara piece. I don't buy a lot of Zara now. Um, but some of their like bloggery stuff can do well. Like I think I just sold like a Kaftan um, iCat print dress for like 50 to $60 and it sold like in a week. Um, but it, it was a blogger favorite. And so I keep my eye out for those like statement pieces with Zara um, and longer length stuff too. So this is a mini length pleated gorgeous, very green metallic -y dress or sorry, skirt. I think this is high waist and I think it's a midi length. And I think that this will do really well, especially during the holidays, which I know we're pretty far away from. But fall is coming up and I think this is going to be um, a very quick selling piece during that time. Um, and it's just gorgeous. I've had a lot of luck with longer length Zara skirts and I think we're gonna list that for 35 to uh, 40. Next up is a brand that I see a lot of people skip. I have some really great luck with it just because it falls under the Y2K trend. It is um, Nike Air Jordan. This is a size large pair of men's sweat shorts. If you find something super unique in this brand and vintage, it can go for really good money um, and it has a really good sell through rate. These ones I'm just gonna list for probably 35 to 40 bucks. Um, I couldn't find a lot of info on the sweat shorts, just like basketball shorts, but I thought, um, I thought it was a pretty good deal. All right, I have shown this brand before, but it's been a while since I found it. And this is a definite bolo if you guys come across it, um, especially in plus size pieces. So the brand is Spencer Alexis. And the tag was cut here. And I was like, man, I'm not gonna be able to figure out the size, but the size was actually right there. It's a three X on the inside tag. So pleasantly surprised to be able to find that. Um, but they're very easy to spot because they are super, let me see if I can get it to go, super like wacky kimonos and a very art to wear, just wacky. <laughs> That's all. They, they almost all look like this, just in different colors. Um, I only paid $3.99 for that, and I'm actually going to list it for $50. Um, the larger sizes sell really, really well. They have a really great sell through rate, and they sell for a lot. So $50 bucks for that. If you were like passing through that, you might think, well, it's some wacky item, but actually really great sell through rate. Uh, this is more of a bread and butter, but I do like getting it. Bonobos Men's Chinos. Um, these ones seem to be a newer style. They've got that like interesting like snap but slide detail, which I've only seen them do. Um, pair of slim pants. These will go 25 to 30 all day long. And we only paid $4.99 for them. So pretty happy with those. I like Bonobos. This is kind of another bolo. I said I don't pick up a lot of Zara and then I'm showing you guys multiple Zara pieces, but bear with me because they are very specific. So this is a Zara man, so men's line, 
and it's 100% linen. And linen stuff in Zara does pretty well. Um, if you check comps for Zara linen, you'll see that there's a lot of stuff that sells. So I looked into that because of this. So Zara Man Slim Fit, and this is a men's hoodie. So more substantial piece. And this had some great sulfur rates. I paid $3.99 and I am going to list this for $35. I think I could have gotten anywhere from uh, 30 to 45. I chose to stick on the lower end just because again, um, linen's only going to be selling quickly for so long. So pricing some of the summary stuff on the lower end just to make sure that it moves quickly before um, before fall and winter come. Um, so that's why I decided that, but really good comps on men's Zara linen hoodies. Uh, this is one I also only get in larger sizes now. This is a Lucky Brand XXL. It's a really pretty, is this a kimono or is it a top? It's a top. It's a button up, very like beachy, lightweight printed top. Uh, we paid, this is $2.99, but I feel like red was 50% off. So it actually might've been like $1.50. We'll probably still only sell it for 25 bucks because even being a larger size, I can't get much for Lucky Brand anymore, um, but still excited for that. I found this set in the pajama section. If you're not checking the pajama section, you definitely should. It is a pair or a set of Reformation like lounge set. So it got some little shorts, definitely needs a lint roll, but it's in really great condition. Um, and the matching top, it's a little crop top with some shorts. I only paid $3.99 for the set and I'm gonna list it for 50. Um, I think I might have been able to get slightly more um, for that, but again, trying to ensure that something sells quickly. So I'm gonna stick to the lower end of that. Uh, next up is another plus size Talbots 2X. We paid $3.99 for it. This is a gorgeous top. It is embroidered, kind of nautical with the white and blue stripes and a little bit of puff sleeve actually too. Um, I will more than likely list this closer to 30 just for those substantial pieces. All right, we have three more pieces. This is another Catherine's 3X, 25 to 30 blouse. This is like a, um, I was gonna say high-low, but it's a split back, it's not a high-low. Tunic top, 25 to 30 on that. This is also a great brand to pick up in larger sizes. It is Bila. This is an XXL, little boho top. Um, and that should go for 25 bucks. And then lastly, I just wanted to share this because this brand performs pretty well and has decent comps, um, but mainly looked at it because it was 100% silk. This is also, or was also in the sleepwear section. It is the brand August Silk and it is 100% silk and it's a little slip dress. If you find these in longer lengths, they do even better. Um, this one's like a little mini dress, but it does have some really cute prints to it. And let me see, I think I was gonna list this for $30. If I would have gotten a longer length, I probably would have listed it for 40 to 50. We've sold the longer lengths, longer length ones. Um, in the past for a lot more money. All right, guys, so that is it. Yep, that's it for today's thrift haul. Hope that you guys enjoyed watching. Let me know down below if you like in the video, either at the beginning or the end, the little breakdown of the thrift haul, like our average sale price and our average, I guess I should say average list price because we're listing it for that but we won't actually know till it sells how much it's selling for, but average list price and then our average cost of goods. If you guys like that like generalized information, let me know down below if you don't care um, and you could do without it. Also let me know down below, um, but that's all I have for you guys and I hope you guys learned something new. If you guys are interested in Dossier, I will also have that link down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one, bye.